All right, I just spent the last 20 minutes contemplating whether I wanted to do the headlights or not. So, but right now, I'm pulling out the interior filter element. Oh yeah, good thing I did. Thing is pretty dirty. So that's why you changed that. I'll just clean this up. Grab some interior cleaner and just clean this off while we're at it. Let's see if I need to get the vacuum out to clean up under there. New filter. It's an OEM Honda filter. I generally end up using OEM parts when I change this stuff. It's not that much more than your generic. Let's see. Is it going that way or that way? I think it's this way. whole lot of junk up in there so you can just sacrifice the towel. I don't know if this is the right stuff for the job, but it'll get it done. So this is the little stuff that I was talking about when, you know, like when I drove the Adams 240, I was talking about you, you know, lots of people, I, I knew exactly what would happen. A lot of people would get all bent out of shape, like I'm, because I, you know, I'm talking about Japanese older cars and, and being all beat up. And you know why I don't understand why it just can't, why you can't just take care of things. You know I guarantee you, when this car is 20 years old, it has nothing to do with money. It just has to do with time and effort. You know you just take care of the car. You wipe it out when you do something like this. You just wipe that little spot off. You take that extra three minutes out of your life and you take care of it. And so. And I know there's a lot of people that you know, lack experience, but you know I didn't get started buying you know expensive cars. I got started buying Hondas. And so if you just take an extra few minutes here and there, if you love your car so much, you know why does it have to be all jacked up? Just take the care, take the time. Clean, keep it clean, keep it neat, and the interior won't fall apart, and the engine bay won't be all weird looking and janky, and you won't have um, you know parts and wires and stuff hanging around all over the place. It'll just look nice and clean like this does because I've taken the effort. All right, so we've got a new cabin filter. I'll change the oil at some point here, but next we're going to deal with the headlights. All right, so these are the new ones, the new headlights, which I ordered just the lights. I didn't order the ballasts and all that stuff, so we'll pull that off. The bulbs and everything will we'll, we'll retrofit right in. But before we put it in, I just want to wipe them down, get them prepped for, I want to put some sealant on them. You know, I think I'm going to put some ammo reflex on them. Let's just do a quick little wipe down. Make sure there's nothing on them. 
Again, these are brand new. I ordered them from Majestic Honda. I think they were like shipped like $900 or something like that, nine, nine, ten. I don't want to clay them or mess with them right now because they're fresh and clean. See, I'm already applying some of the tricks that I learned at the optimum training. Cut that off. And we flip it around. And we have ourselves a little multi-finger mitt. Some reflex. So on there. And a lot more than I need. So I'm choosing to put this coating on the on here instead of something else because I find that this, this doesn't have the same permanence. Plus it looks more wax-like. So we'll let that flash. Let's wipe the other one down. Now, to do the headlights, I've got to take the front bumper off, which I was hoping I didn't need to do, which was the wet side, this side. You can tell when you need a little more because it gets a little grabby. Okay. So what we'll do is um, we'll let the headlights, I'll let the let headlights sit here, I'll let them flash, and uh, then I'll wipe this off. Lots of static. I just don't want any high spots to settle, so I'm going to wipe it off a little sooner. I'm going to let that cure while I'm taking the bumper off, and I'll put another coat on. And then what we'll do is we'll put, so we'll put a layer of skin on them. And then I can top with, I'm pretty sure I'm transitioning to using spray wax from, car, from, uh, the spray wax from Optimum. All right, so we'll let that sit. Uh, let's go deal with the uh, with getting the headlights out. All right, so step one, I'm just giving myself enough room to get up under here. I think I've decided to do a lift at the new garage facility. I don't need a lot of extra space. I'm only gonna jack up one side. I'm not going to be under the car, so I'm not really worried about. I'm not going to worry about jack stands or anything like that. Actually, you know what? I am going to jack up the other side. Let's just make this easier. All right. I'm sure that some of you guys are going to yell at me for not getting. Here, you know what? We'll do this. And put some jack stands under just to be safe. I don't want everybody yelling at me. Again, I'm not going to get under the car. There we 
There we go. So you got some jack stands that'll catch it if it falls. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. I'm gonna take these off. Oh, the one inside here, this is the one you always forget about. A little 10 mil there. I think you gotta take one, two, three. So there's one up here. And then all the ones underneath. I really need to get one of those little magnetic parts bins. off I don't oh yeah I don't think I'd hope I don't need to take the darn lip off I love love, love this little quarter inch this little lightweight Milwaukee fuel impact driver it's awesome I figure out the hole in my in my bubble this is certainly fun kind of working through one little project at a time Don't do that. Shoot, while I got the thing up in the air, I should throw the suspension on. I think that's all. I don't think I need to remove. There's another one that goes this way. Of missing parts on this thing. So, this lip is not screwed into the right location. It looks like I need to pull the lip off. It's never good when you got wood screws in the bottom of a car. It looks like this is supposed to mount directly to the factory holes. Oh crap, is this 3M taped? If this is, I'm gonna be ticked. Great. Good, it's only a few pieces. Yeah, downforce, downforce lip. For those of you that have been asking. Including, I've been one of the people that have been asking. What lip is it? But see, I think it's supposed to mount right to these. So I'm gonna see why we need any. I don't know why we need those, those wood screws. So in fact, I don't think I even need it. I needed to take that lip off. Let me take these one, two, three. I need a flathead. I didn't, I mean, there's not really any point to bringing the camera down here. It's super easy. I mean, you're just removing these little 10 millimeter. I'm excited about the proposition, the possibility to get some sonic tools in my life. Getting proper panel removal tools and things like that. I 
Yeah, I guess I do need to remove all these lip screws. This is why you never want to buy a modified car. Because this one's pretty darn OEM and it's missing a bunch of parts. Nothing critical, but... Okay, that's loose. Gotta take this one off here. That's much smaller. So I wanna get, I'm gonna get the S2000 done, or not done, but I'm gonna get these, I'm gonna get these little projects done so I can get my routine set up for the new garage space. You know, what cars are gonna go there and when. So I need to get one more car over there. So I have two cars in the trailer there, two cars here. Okay, so that part's off. I think this needs to pop out. I don't think I'm missing any. So that will come out straight. Okay, so that comes out. The bottom's loose. All those tabs. Okay, there we go. You just pull. This is what's always been so great about the, taking the GT3 apart, as it comes out smooth. No concerns whatsoever. There's just a small little tab there. Does that come out? There we go. Last little headlight tab off of here. Oops. I'm gonna lose these washers. Dang, fingers. There's the last tab right here, it won't let go. spot just won't let go everything's out but that one little spot oh man freaking idiot Mess that up. Gee whiz, man. Jesus. Ah. Dang it. Got it. Ay, ay, ay. All right, so if you just push that little tab up from the bottom, it was just hung up. Oh, we're in here. Let's clean this mess up. So I'm gonna do the smart thing and wait.
to paint this car when I'm completely done with all this messing with all this crap. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be completely done, but. Alrighty, let's figure out how to get these headlights out. All right, so there's one. There must be one there somewhere. And then this one down in the corner. I don't think you need to take the fender off. I hope not. I need to get that Milwaukee light that goes across. Ah, got it. It's this one right here, sitting right in front of me. And that one, I'm gonna remove this bracket here. Plenty of room down here for an intercooler, that's for sure. This is certainly a little more of a project than I was anticipating. I think there's one more up underneath here somewhere. Found it, it's up underneath here. in there. So now I think this thing slides out. The trick is going to be getting the new, the new headlight in here without messing it up. My favorite Molex plugs. No, okay. We don't want to touch that bulb. So there's the headlight. I think I need to remove the ballast off the bottom. All right, it's only been an hour, but let's just throw another coat on here. And we'll work on the new lights. You know, one of the things to keep in mind, like you're watching this on video and all of those cameras are pretty good. The lens is good. You can't, and I'm gonna show you here in a second the difference between the two lights as far as you know what a new light looks like and what the old light looks like with like the stress fractures and things but you know and this is part of the reason why I never do 50 or where I never do like before and after shots and videos or or post pictures on Facebook and Instagram of wow look how shiny this is I mean I could go out to the dirtiest car just clean it and you know it'll sh look shiny on, on pictures on, on film or on you know, in a digital photo. You know, it might look a little better, but you can make even a reasonably jacked up looking car. See, so here's all the issues of the headlight. So, so this is, you know, the original headlight where we have, this was from the 3M um, that I wet sanded the heck out of and just couldn't get it out. Like, I don't know what it, why it you know penetrated wooden wet sand out I'm sure I could keep sanding but uh, anyway there's lots of stress fracturing in the headlights which I think is a common problem with these uh, but I think the key was you know once you put the tint on there it doesn't allow them to contract and expand like they normally would uh, and so this 
this whole thing, you know, kind of kind of gets these these stress fractures. But you know, the thing's 10 years old, 11 years old, so whatever. Um, cost me a few hundred dollars to replace. Uh, a lot of hundred dollars, I should say, to replace. Uh, but now I'll have you know brand new headlights in the in the car. So we need to pull off the projector assembly, and I think the ballast off the bottom. So let's wipe off our excess. So we have two coats of the ammo reflex coating on there. static electricity. So I think the only thing I need is the projector ballast. It's like everything else is everything else is pretty plug and play. Yep. I hope this isn't too terribly difficult. Molex plug comes off so we can come up through the light. All right, we're going to reuse this rubber grommet. So we'll need this piece here. All of this. So we need a Torx bit. G25. Bingo. I've always been a huge fan of these headlights. How they look. They do flash other people though when you're driving around. Cool, super easy. All right. So get this puppy out of the way. Not certain, but I'm pretty sure you don't want to get fingerprints on this bulb. The oils from your hands mess those up. Where's Rai Rai when I need them? I need those little fingers. It doesn't screw in there, it just kind of pops into place. Let me take our ground on the side here. Looks like it's certainly easier to get it on there before you put the light in. And we're in. So this seals up nice and tightly. That's in. is our ballast. So first thing, we're going to put this little rubber grommet back on here. It seals up nicely. Some wire snakes around. Actually, I think, I think the wire snaps into here. It's not torquing this. I've got this on setting one, so it's the we're not actually torquing this very tightly because you don't want to torque the heck out because it's plastic. We'll let that reflex set up overnight. Let's go try to install this without ruining it. But first, let's get a picture of old versus new. All right, so there's the new light and the old light. Now remember, I just corrected them. So the old one doesn't look horrible, but you know if you could see it in person, it looks very different. 
much, much nicer. So you can see what, you know, what it looks like inside here. Let's get the light Some, in. somewhat comfortable. You know what I could do? I could tape up the light just to be safe. Let's see. I think I can do this without messing it up. Let's get our high beam in there. Get our high beam back in place. Let's do our projector, our low beam. Here's our daytime running light. That snaps into place. And then our turn signal. It's pretty standard. Let's get the hardest one in first. This bottom one. Two. I guess we can torque this one down now. I'm telling you guys, I should always show you the finished product. I should show you the second headlight, not the first. The second one's always a lot easier. <sighs> Again, we're talking, we're talking plastic here, so we don't want to go too tight. Wow, it looks so good. Headlight number one. Done. All right, so let's see if we can do headlight number two a little bit more efficiently now that we know what we're doing. First, let's take the bumper bracket off. what color I'm going to paint this thing if I do paint it which I think I'm going to I'm certainly gonna to have to paint the hard top there was some kind of filler or something on it because the uh, second I clayed it the thing is incredibly jacked up 
I've never seen anything like it. It's like they sanded it with sanded it with like 100 grit sandpaper. All right. Okay, so it kicks out a little bit. Let's see if I can remember how to do that efficiently. All right, so let's pull our high beam off. First our low beam. Turn signal. Daytime running lights. <clears throat> high beam. Okay, let's go pull this apart and I'll come back. You guys already saw me do this. All right, so that headlight took me less than five minutes to do. First one took me 25 minutes to figure out what to do. So let's see if I can, okay. That's the easy part. Now comes the hard part. Sliding this puppy in place. Just rock it back ever so slightly. Ah, oh, got it. Figured out now. Shouldn't speak so soon. There we go. So what you do is just tilt the headlight up ever so slightly. Your tendency is to want to try to push it back, but then it doesn't. The hole doesn't line up. This is another one of those, man, if I could only do this again and know what I know now, it'd be so much easier. Before I put that bracket back on, let's make sure the headlights work. Nice. Nice. Let's check our turn signals. Uh oh. So that bulb doesn't isn't working. What the heck, man. I think I'm taking this one back off. Make sure our high beams work. With high beams work, just that one turn signal. Well, looks like I'm taking that other headlight back off. Put this one on, because we know this one works. Okay, that headlight's on. I'm going to take the other one off and figure out what's wrong with the turn signal. All right, so here's the deal. Had everything done. I tested the lights. This is how it always goes. And this turn signal or whatever that little that little side marker light i guess that's the turn signal that's a little side marker running light was out and so i ran out to the store um, to get the darn bulb but i also scratched a gosh darn headlight just taking it out just a little baby scratch but Man, I had everything perfect, and I just messed it up. I guess that's just the way it goes, huh? Please let me just get this back in here. It's like when it when it goes, it's super easy, but until it does. Okay, so now what I did before Trying to get it so that this piece here, this little sticky part, <clears throat> 
All right, lights in. So if you couldn't tell already, if I didn't say it already, we got a cat. So I had a squirrel scratching through the roof of my home theater. It's unbelievable. And so I caught that squirrel. I called a squirrel hunter guy. Some, some dude came and we caught it on the roof in a day. So he got rid of that squirrel. And then I'm sitting at my kitchen counter in my brand new, modified, beautiful kitchen on uh, two days ago in the morning. And a rat just kind of squirrel, squirt, you know, just, just cruises across the floor, goes underneath the stove. I'm like, oh my gosh. And so Michelle went and got a cat the next day. This one stayed though, so this is good. So hopefully the cat, the cat's right over here. So they're trying to lure it over so it'll come hang out with me. I hope that thing's an ax murderer. All right, this is the second time the headlight's in. Let's make sure it works. Bulb, 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 yes, we're in. So I'm gonna put the sucker back together and we'll work on the, work on the front bumper. All right, now comes the, the hard part, putting this thing back together. Lights are in, only one minor little nick. Let's hope we don't get any more let me put this thing back in here. So I just cleaned up the edge of the, the bumper. Let's see if we can't get this thing back on here. So I cleaned all this up. I knew I was gonna forget this. <clears throat> It's not going to stay on there very well, is it? This is usually a two-man type job. And I'm going to attempt to do it without scratching my brand new headlights. Couldn't get this thing to come out. Let's see if I can get it back on. is so much harder than my Porsche. I'm certain that gap didn't look like that before. good. So everything's good but this one gap right here. Something about this part is not sitting correctly. It's all good. It's all good. That looks pretty good. That'll pull up there. So that gap's great. What's going on with this one gap right here? <sighs> Shoot. Let me see if I can adjust this from underneath. Oh, I'm going to have to take it back off. All right, let's clean. 
clean these little tabby things up so they actually work. Now those will actually work. I made a giant mess right in the spot where I'm working. You know what? I put gloves on for a minute there. It was a much better experience. Maybe I should, I think I might start wearing them. Certainly be a lot cleaner. So that took me what? Two minutes. Slight mess, but two minutes and now I've got a parts that next time will come right out. It's too late, my hands are freaking jacked already. All right, so these puppies go right here. One. So let's, let me just put the, yeah, so that lip should line up with these. But first, let me get this 3M tape off of here. Seems like I spend a third of my life dealing with adhesives. All right, so I came out here early this morning to all motivated to get this bumper all lined up and I decided, you know what? One, I don't wanna do it. Uh, two, I'm gonna be doing a supercharger soon. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do, this is motivating me. I'm gonna bite the bullet. I'm gonna call up um, the guys at LHD Performance, get it on the schedule and uh, they'll, I'm sure those guys will be able to fix it in half an hour where it'll take me. And we gotta take the bumper off again anyway. What I don't want to do is keep taking it off and putting it back on. You know how that goes. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't go back together the same. But, you know, the, the headlights look great. Um, so anyway, we'll get, the, we'll get the bumper lined up when we do the, the, the supercharger. Uh, so I'm going to make the call and get it scheduled, and uh, it'll be a big deal for this thing. Uh, and then I'll know, uh, so another thought process I was thinking about last night at you know, 2 a.m. when I should have been sleeping, was then I'll know what type of wheels and tires I need to do, whether I need to go with something wider and start rolling fenders and things like that. Uh, I'll have a better feel for what the, what the power's like. Anyway, I'm just going to keep rolling with S2000 videos, keep, keep rolling with them. I'm going to unbox the Olins here. Uh, and again, I'm not, I'm thinking I'm going to do this in series format. I'm just going to crank them out and, and, and make a video whenever I have something going on. I'm taking it over to the garage now. I have a chance to get Michelle. Uh, she, she's going to go over with me. I have a truckload full of crap like my, my Krenzel 1122. I'm going to bring that over there and start to get that set up and figure out, you know, feel out what, what that's going to look like. Uh, so we're going to run over there today. That way I'll have a car here in the bubble, the truck, and then whatever car I have, I'll just cycle through, I'll just cycle through. You know, take one, drop it off uh, when I go over to my office. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, keep uh, keep tuned in for more S2000. So what happens when the when the force pulls you back? Your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. The floor. <laughs>